Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In these tutorials, we will learn all about how to load vector layers from various data sources such as shapefiles, geopackets, DXF, CSV, GPX, and WFS. There are many other data sources available, but we will be focusing on just the six. From databases related data sources such as PostGIS, SpatialLite, and MySQL, we will create a dedicated video for each one of them. I will proceed with this video with the assumption that you have already watched my prior video regarding the process of setting up PyQGIS on VS Code. If you haven't, I recommend you, you give it a watch in order to set up PyQGIS on your VS Code for a smooth coding experience. Before we start with the actual code, it is essential to understand what vector layers are. Simply put, vector layers represent real-world features as points, lines, or polygons in a digital format. So we are going to take points. Points are used to represent specific locations such as towns, buildings, events, etc. The scale of your map will determine what is represented as a point. So an example is that when you have a very detailed map of a neighborhood, then points will probably be the trees or electric grids and what of you. If you have a map of the nation, then the districts might become points. The houses instead of polygons will become points. So the scale of your map will determine what exactly becomes a point. Point vectors have no dimension, which means you cannot measure their length or their area. It is said to have zero dimensions. Lines. Lines are used to represent features such as roads, canals, railway, streams, contour lines, and so on. Line vectors have one dimension and therefore can only be used to measure length. Polygons. Polygons are used to represent more complex objects such as boundaries of a lake, country, house, and what have you. Just like points, polygons also depends on the scale of your map. So again, with the, our previous example, if you have a map of your district, the houses will be represented by polygons. But if you scale your map to the point of maybe a nation or even the region, then those same buildings will be points instead of polygons. So again, choosing whether you want, you want to represent an object as a point or polygon will depend on the scale of your map. Polygon vectors are said to have two dimensions. That means their length and area can be measured. Each data source that will be discussed here, be it a shapefile or GPX, has its own unique characteristics that makes it suited for specific tasks. We'll take a brief look at each and every one of the data sources that we'll be dealing with. Loading vector layers. To load vector layers, as we learned in our previous video, we'll type pi QGIS in order to get our boilerplate code, press enter. With our boilerplate generated, the, layer, the first vector data source will be loaded will be the shape file but before we load the shape file we'll have to understand a bit about shape files shape file is a popular multi-file vector format accepted by both commercial and open source software and has become the industry standard in a shape file there are usually three important and mandatory files as you can see on the screen we have the dot shp file this file contains the shape of our layer so either the layer is a point it's a line or a polygon and then we have the dot shx file this file is the shape of the index position that means it allows for forward and backwards search then we have the dbf file which contains the attribute data of our data source of our layer so the attribute data can be either spatial or non-spatial. Now we'll be, we'll be looking at that. If you've ever used QGIS before, when you go to open attribute data, the, the information that you, can, that you find in the open attribute data is contained in this file. You can open this file with softwares like Microsoft Excel and Microsoft Access. So the three we just mentioned are, are mandatory. Without them, your shape files would not be able to load. The other three are the other files that are optional. So without them, your shape file will still load. So one such file is a .prg file, which contains the metadata associated 
with our Schaefer coordinates and projection system. If the file doesn't exist, you will get an error in EOGI software. Another file format is the .xml file format, which also contains the metadata associated with the shape file. The last two file formats associated with shape files that we'll be looking at are the .sbn format and the .sbx format. These two files work together to optimize spatial queries, so they allow you to query your information in your shape file. Let's get back to the code. Since we'll be working with vector layers, we first have to import the QGIS vector layer class. So, QGIS vector layer. We've imported the vector layer class and then we have these two files. So let's break down what these two files are. The first line, we have a variable path to shape file. This is used to assign the path to where the shape file is stored on your computer. So in my case, it is stored in the D drive, in my GS folder, in my shape files folder, and then in my shape files folder, there is a folder called capitals. On the second line, what we are doing is that we are creating a QGIS vector layer instance. We are using the QGIS vector layer class. What it means is that QGIS is creating um, a vector layer, right? That it, it's able to understand. So in the vector layer class, it, it takes two parameters. The first one is the path to the shape file, which we, we specify above. And the second argument takes in the name of, of the shape file. When you open QGIS, right, the name that you have here, the names that appear whenever you load a particular shape file, the names that appear here, so that's what the second argument is supposed to be. QGIS wants you to provide a name for your, your shape layer. And then the last argument, OGR, is a driver QGIS uses to read vector data sources. In order to see that our code actually works, given this code, what we are what we are doing is on the first line we are checking if the layers that we if the layer we've created is valid, meaning if we made a mistake, maybe the path is wrong or there the, the, the was a misspelling, or maybe we didn't specify the correct provider. So there can be a myriad of things that might go wrong and we have to check whether or not our vector layer is correct. So in order to do that, we are saying that if the vector layer is correct, we are going to print the name of the vector layer, else we are going to print can't load the layer. In order to run the code, we are going to specify the Python interpreter you should use. Again, if you've, if you've watched my first video that's installing QGIS on your Windows you will understand why we are going with the Python 3 QGIS. We are telling Python to load this file with this interpreter that we created in our very first video in this particular series. So after we've done that, we'll press enter. And let's see, so can't load. What is telling us is that there is a problem with our, our layer. So we have to find out what the problem is. So as it turned out, the path I specified was inaccurate. I recently changed the, the name of my folder, so I have to account for that. So I'm telling you, there is a folder called QGIS files, and then we have the shape files, and then we have a folder called district capitals. And in that folder, there is a shape file, dot shape file it. So PyQGIS is intelligent enough to specify the dot shape file, um, the dot shape file file in my district capitals folder. We'll run our Python file again, and then as you can see, we have our district capital shape file. The next file format we'll be looking at is a geo package format. So, what is a geo package? Unlike the shape file, the geo package is a modern format for storing geographical information designed as an open standard by the Open Geospatial Consortium, that is the OGC. You can imagine the, the geo package. As a, as a container or like a, a database, a mini database that holds a variety of geospatial data. So unlike the shape file that can only hold vector layers, the geo package can hold vector layers, vector data, which is points, lines, polygons, raster data, like spatial um, satellite images, aerial imagery, and, and, and what have you. And then how data does like pre-rendered map images. So the cute Geo package is, a, is much more modern and much more versatile on shape files. 
Um, one other cool stuff about QGIS, uh, the Geo package, is that you can even contain your QGIS projects in general. We are going to dedicate the video to learn how to do that. So mostly, I would advise people to go with Geo package whenever um, you want to share your your work with other people. And it's, it's easier for. But then I think the the downside with Geo package is that not everyone uses it. Most people are familiar with shape files, so most people just go with shape files. Just like how we dissected the shape file data source, we are going to do the same thing for GeoPackage. The first line is a variable to the path of our data source. This part of the code is standard, so it's a path to the folder, right? Now, where there is a slight difference from the shape file is this part of the code. Good. And the reason why there is a case is that as we discussed just a minute, uh, a second ago, GeoPacket can contain multiple layers and the layers could be either vector layer, tiles or non-spatial in nature and because they can do that we need to be able to specify which particular layer in our container do we want to use this is the name of our GeoPacket file this operator is the pipe operator so we are saying that in our GeoPacket database there is a layer with the name district cap the next line as we discussed earlier, we create a, a vector layer class. We input the path to our should have been a path. It should have been path to geo package. So if, if everything, if we've done everything as it should be, then when we run, we should get the name geo package file. Let's run and see. And voila, we have geo package file. There was no issue with our code. So I, I think um, the video. It's getting too long so i would stop here and then there will be a part two where we we talk about the other four vector, vector data sources i hope this has been a very informative video i would appreciate it if you like subscribe and share it to your friends and um watch out for for part two and happy happy learning bye